Oh, hello, and good afternoon. My name is Charles Morton, and today we are going to have a discussion on African films. The films we are discussing today are two films by Senegalese film directors. The first is Ousmane Semben's Le Noir de, also known in English as Black Girl, and Jibril Diop Membiti's Tugi Buki. These two films are of a very different sort. Semben's style is straightforward and observant, whereas Mimbeti's is avant-garde. However, though these films differ greatly in some ways, they both share many of the same thematics. The biggest similarities between these two films and the key to our discussion today is how both these films interrogate different systems of repression in post-colonial society that alienate African individuals and how they renounce the notion of immigration as an effective means of escaping these forces. Released in 1966, Osman Semben's pioneering film Le Noir de was the first feature film ever directed by a sub-Saharan African. Le Noir de is the simple story of a Senegalese woman named Diawana who moves to France in order to work as a maid for an unnamed French couple. At first, the move to France is a dream come true, but as the story unravels, her dream becomes a nightmare. One of the key successes of Le Noir de is its examination of race, culture, gender, and class as alienating forces and the detriments faced by displaced Africans. In Le Noir de, class is a significant factor in Diawana's alienation. Class differences are emphasized in the scene where Diawana is hired. In this sequence, her mistress picks her out of a line of women off the street as if she were shopping. Additionally, her subservient role limits her freedoms. For example, as a maid, she is not allowed to choose her own clothes. These scenes examine the ways in which class works as an alienating force. The scene where the French couple has guests over critiques Western sensibilities towards African culture and colonialist viewpoints as alienating influences. In this scene, Diawana's employers show her off to impress their guests. The African food and Diawana serve as entertainment for their guests, while in contrast, their discussion is largely racist and patronizing towards African culture. The scene works as a critique of the condescending Eurocentric viewpoints towards African culture and the resulting alienation of African individuals. Moreover, Diawana's alienation is furthered by her gender. One of the guests allows himself to a kiss, explaining that he has never kissed a black woman before. The sequence expands Semben's critique of the Eurocentric viewpoints into the context of gender relations as an alienating force. The discussion with guests throughout the meal also examines the way that language is used as an alienating force. Diawana's mistress denies her ability to speak French. Her guest suggests that she must understand instinctively. The sequence satirizes Eurocentric notions that the mind and thought processes of blacks are inherently different. Additionally, Diawana's illiteracy is another example of her alienation as a result of language. If she is to write home, one of her employees must write for her. Towards the end of her film, her employers try to trick her with a fake letter from her mother. Furthermore, Le Noir de condemns the self-alienation of Africans who reject traditions and values of their own culture. In one sequence, her boyfriend reprimands her for desecrating a national monument. Diawana's eventual downfall and subsequent suicide as a result of her mistreatment and isolation, contrasted with her normal happy life she lived in Dakar, ironizes the fantasy of life in France. Diawana's alienation is punctuated visually by the mask she gives her employees when she's hired. When she gives them the mask, the French couple are delighted. It is placed among other objects of African art, but when we see the mask in their apartment in France, it is isolated and out of context in the same way that Diawana is. Semben's Le Noir de works as an examination of different alien, alienating forces within a post-colonial society, including race, culture, gender, and class. That being said, let's move on to the next film. The second film, Tukibuki, by Jibril 
Diop Membiti, was released in 1973. Tugibuki is about two young lovers, Mori, a shepherd, and Anta, a university student. Mori and Anta want nothing more than to leave their home in Dakar and move to Paris. In Tugibuki, Membiti explores the sociocultural alienation of post-colonial African individuals and the urge to emigrate to Western societies. Most of the film follows Anta and Mori as they attempt to make enough money to travel to Paris by various unlawful means. Anta and Mori's dishonest attempts to make money and are presented comically and at the same time disapprovingly like the archetypical trickster figure of the African oral tradition. Membati uses Mori and Anta to examine the ways that individuals of the post-colonial system are alienated within their own societies. One example is Mori's alienation as a result of class. This is exemplified in a scene where Mori is assaulted by a group of college students. Anta's alienation, however, is a result of her gender, underscoring the dyna dynamics between sexes. One example of this is when she is harassed by the same group of university students. Anta's alienation as a result of her gender is highlighted visually by her attire. Throughout most of the film, she is dressed in men's clothing, usually a button-up shirt and pants, in stark contrast to the traditional Senegalese female attire. But the greatest factor that concerns Maureen and Anta's alienation does not come from an outside source, but rather from the denial of their own culture and traditions. Mori's desire for wealth causes him to act harshly towards his fellow citizens and is criticized by his elders for not respecting the African tradition. <laughs> Mambati punctuates Mori's denial of African traditions visually with his motorcycle, which has an ox skull mounted on the handlebars. The relation is expressed overtly through the criticism of Mori's elders. These sequences examine the ways that Africans can alienate themselves by rejecting their own culture and traditions. Though reaching France is our protagonist's ultimate goal, and we never see them once they're there, Mambati renounces their fantasy of life in Paris. On the boat headed for France, he presents a con condescending conversation between white academics about African art. This sequence simultaneously presents the alienation Anta and Mori would face in their so-called paradise and critiques colonial sensibilities toward African art. The illusion of their escape to Paris is underscored by Membati's repeated use of Josephine Baker in the soundtrack whenever the two discuss their plans of emigration. The contrast between the light-hearted sound of Baker's singing voice and the couple's stern expressions within the desolate landscape reinforces their fantasy of Paris as an illusion. After a critical look at these two films, we can now see the clear thematic similarities. Both Semben's Le Noir de and Mambati's Tsugibuki both examine the dynamics of the many diverse forces, such as race, culture, gender, and class, which alienate Africans in the post-colonial society. Additionally, they reject the fantasy of France as a paradise for Africans. I would like to thank you for watching today. I'm Charles Morton. Goodbye and farewell. Paris, Paris, Paris.